who calls us by name. Come to God who shapes our lives. Come to the Spirit who molds our hearts. We walk on the path of the cross. We remain standing as we sing in our gathering song. Praise Him, praise Him. seated as we go to God in prayer. Our most righteous and heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to honor and adore you. We come to praise you and lift you up on high. Father, we look up to you as we bask in the glory of your creation of the heavens and the earth. We adore you because of the blessings you have bestowed upon us, dear God. We adore you because there is none like you, Father, and we know that only you alone are God. Dear God, your ever presence gives us hope and increases our faith because we know there is none like you, dear God. And we know there is nothing that you don't know about us. And you are always in our heart, dear God. Loving God, teach us to love you more. Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our great Redeemer, for coming upon this earth. For our sakes. Father, day and night you remain considerate and you put your loving arms around us at all times. Merciful Father, we come here confessing our personal sins. We confess to you our Father, that we have sinned by our very thoughts, 
words, and deeds. And look to you through your mercy to cleanse us. We confess the sins that no one knows and the sins that everyone knows. Father, we come confessing the sins that are a burden to us and the sins that do not bother us because, Father, we have grown used to them. We have strayed away from the path that you have chosen for us, Lord, and gone after the glamour of this world. We have become lost sheep, O oh Lord. We have not done the things we should have done and gone after things which we should not have done. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Father, we confess our sins as a church. We have not worshipped you as we always should. We have not loved one another as Christ loved us. We have not forgiven one another as we have been forgiven. We have not given ourselves in love and service for the world as Christ has given himself for us. We have not loved our neighbors as we have loved ourselves. Father, send the Holy Spirit upon us that you may give us power to live as by your mercy, as you have called us to live in peace, Lord. Restore unto us, dear Father, that we might become beacons in this world, showing the goodness of who you are, Father. Father, we pray for our brother, Reverend Shane O'Connor, who you have sent to share your word with us today. Father, we pray for all who have come to worship you this morning, both here in the chapel and via the internet. Comforting Father, you alone know what is in our hearts, and as such, we ask you to be with us and guide us through these difficult times that we now face, dear God. So hear our prayer, dear God, and through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, O oh stand for a responsive reading. Our responsive reading this morning comes to us from Psalm 77, reading from verses 1 to 12. <clears throat> I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out on tiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remember you, God, and I groaned. 
I meditated and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? His unfailing love vanish forever. Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this will I appeal. The day I stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will, I will consider, consider all your works, works and, and meditate on all your mighty deeds. We will remain standing as we lift our voices in worship and sing our songs of worship. days when we may be fearful with the um, with the current COVID climate hanging over our heads we are reminded by the song that Jesus the beautiful name of Jesus is our strength our shield our stronghold or everything may we hold on to him with each passing day his mighty name this morning as we sing you deserve the glory Thank you. 
We'll now be seated as our church secretary comes to us with our welcome and congregational greetings. On this second Sunday in the month of September, we remember the great commission of the Lord as we are called to go. September has been observed as Mission Awareness Month. And as we heed his call, we're confident that whom God calls, he also equips and strengthens. So a very warm welcome to all gathered for worship this morning, those gathered here in the chapel, and those who join us via the internet. May we be refreshed and renewed by the Holy Spirit as we spend the time in his presence. We acknowledge the presence of anyone who worships with us for the very first time. If this is your first time with us, we ask you to wave your hand or stand so we can acknowledge your presence. We are all together again. If you have been sick or away from us and you are in church this morning, we are delighted to have you in church and we are so glad that his presence has led you to this place. Leading us in worship is Deacon Steve Mighty. And the one who will bring the word is Reverend Shane O'Connell. He will join us later. Reverend Shane is a friend of our pastor and a friend of this church. Our pastor preaches at Sydenham and then Glade. Please be in prayer for our leader, our preacher, and our pastor. We offer words of greetings to each other as we stand and sing, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please stand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most Now listen to the opportunities for service and fellowship. This evening at 8 p.m., we share in Nightcap program. It's a 15 minutes devotional with music, prayer, and word, and the word, and this will be circulated through WhatsApp. It substitutes for our regular Sunday evening service. On Wednesday, we meet for the Hour of Power at 12.30 p.m. And then at 7.30 p.m., we meet for Bible study via the Zoom platform. And we will continue under the theme, God, 
faith and COVID-19. The Learning Center is still in need of teachers. If you can serve in this capacity, please contact Sister Shirley Wiley or the church office. One of our homebound, Sister Kathleen Fru, is very ill. Please remember her in your prayers. We remember all those who have lost loved ones. And we continue to pray God's enabling grace will be on them, their families, and their loved ones. Let us also remember our responsibility to call or pray with those among us who are sick or homebound and special care. Have a blessed week. The hushers will now come and wait upon us as we give back unto God a portion of what he has bestowed upon us. Let us stand for the offertory hymn. Bless the thy gifts so hands have brought. Bless the the one for hearts have planned. Ours is the Father, we come before your presence this morning. We come, Almighty God, to give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. We come, Lord, to thank you for your many blessings upon us. And so, Lord, as you continue to bless and provide for us, we give you thanks. And so at this moment, Lord, we give back a portion of what is given unto us through your mercy and your grace that it will be to the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth as we worship together and spread salvation over the land and so father may your kingdom continue to reign and as you blessed what is given today may it be multiplied and spread throughout your vision for us here on earth true lord jesus we pray amen September being Mission Month, we will have a testimony this morning. But before the person comes up to give that testimony, the drama ministry, 
will come and minister to us. COVID helpline, how can I assist? Yes, that is correct. We are open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Certainly. Thank you so much for calling COVID helpline. Have a good day. COVID helpline, how can I assist? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, so once it is that you get to your two weeks, we will definitely come, yes, we'll send someone to check on you again at that point. Certainly, and thanks for calling COVID Helpline. COVID Helpline, how may I assist? Yes, sir? What are your symptoms, please? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. All right, sir, I would suggest to you that you have some rest and some ginger tea. Sir, you have a case of fatigue and gas. No, sir, that is not a symptom of COVID. Have a good day. Thanks for calling the COVID helpline. COVID helpline, how can I assist? Sharon? Is you that Sharon? Sharon, we had this conversation yesterday. The checks are not available and you have to wait two weeks for the government to disperse them. Sharon, I understand that, but the conversation is not going to change. The checks are not ready. All right, Sharon, call tomorrow. Have a good day, Sharon. COVID cares. Else, yeah. I'm gonna answer nobody else. Ciao. Jenny? Mm. How warm to you? Take one guess. Guess who just called? Sharon again. Who else? Every day God send the woman call with the same question, but the same check. Well, not take no less than the same two weeks. Why? I don't know. You sure you give her all the information? She not, she not short by information. She short by understanding. Two weeks is two weeks. Sure. Jenny, my lose a little work. You yeah, know, I guess you kind of have to understand, Sharon. You know, because now you tell me, say, in the tourism industry, she work. Hmm. And you know how things slow down drastically in that industry. Yeah, she, she have me. children. I mean, you can just imagine how the bills them are just a pile up. Hmm. So, yeah, for sure, a bit more understanding to the cause. But every day, so every day. You know, you see when this COVID thing, they just come in from the scene, me the anxious and afraid, afraid the same way. So you have to understand people. Me never really know what was going to happen. But you know, after a while, me have to take stock of myself and me have to realize, say, listen, not just that COVID going to be here for a while, but God is still here. So regardless of whatever is happening, me have to rely on rock back for my feet and realize, say, listen, God's still in control. And no matter what kind of hell I break loose, me still have to put my faith and hope in a God. You know, the problem is not everybody have that reassurance. Not, true. not everybody knows that they feel rest in the promises of God. Not everybody knows that they feel rely upon God about everything and that God is going to come true for us and that God is a God of him word and that God is a God we keep in promises not one of him promises now go come true for us when we put our faith and hope in him so the next time when time Sharon call because you know so she gonna call back mm -hmm. just be a bit more compassionate because them time you call for people for have a bit more compassion it call for we to be more friendly, to be more understanding, 
because Anna, everybody deal with stress the same way True. Some of we as because stress come, we drop down and we tumble down and we keel over. And everybody deal with stress good. So be a bit more patient with Sharon the next time she call. You know, Marilla's we just do, you know. And I take your advice because we never did treat her too good. Because every day she call, me tell us every day, don't every day. I tell me the same story, but I take your advice. I'm going to realize someone was very short with her and my light never shine. Mm -hmm. You can imagine me tell us more than Christian without my light just did them a while ago. But I'm going to thank you for brush up on me. And that, I'm going to talk. I'm going to wait for she to call me tomorrow. I'm going to call her back today. I'm going to just, you know, give some encouraging words to her because I'm going to know she's she going through it. But at the same time, she's not going to say nine, though. But I'm going to call her. Hi. Should not answer yet. Hi, Sharon. It's me. No, Sharon, the check don't reach. I just called to indicate to you that when the check is ready, I will call you personally. I'm making you my personal assignment. Yes, yeah, Sharon. Truth, I promise. And I realized I was a bit short with you a while ago, and I apologize. Hmm? We all have our struggles and our bad days. I should not have taken it out on you, and I really am sorry. I know what you're going through, and I know it is hard. So I am going to ensure that as soon as your check ready, I call you. And I, I'm not sure if you're a Christian or a Sharon. You are a Christian? I had no idea, but I'm happy you said it. You know what? You know, iron sharpness, iron, you know. So I'm using the opportunity to remind you of the promises of God, yes? You remember him saying he'd never leave us nor forsake us? That we should fret not or we should cast our cares upon him? Yes, Sharon. And I know when you're going through it hard for you to remember the promises, which is I'm happy that the Lord had led you to me so that I can highlight them to you. And you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways, you know? Because just as I am saying things and witnessing to you, I am witnessing to myself. Yes, Sharon. So here what? Going forward, we're going for a better relationship, all right? Uh, kiss those children for me, man. <laughs> all right, Sharon. Yes, the Lord loves all of us. Have a good day now. Oh, I'm glad I took your advice. I feel better too, you know. Yes, you see? Yeah, man. You know what? I hear my phone ring off around the corner. I'm going to take my breaks. I'm tired. tired. <laughs> We give God thanks for the drama group. Our sister Diane Dyke will now come to us with a testimony. In the house of the Lord, with the saints, gathered with the saints on another Sunday to worship the saints here in the chapel and those online. I am here this morning to share with you my, some of my coping strategies in coping with COVID-19. I'll be talking to Sharon from the play and to the rest of us, those who have already embraced the Lord as their savior and those who are yet to embrace him. This is my third time since March, since the advent of COVID on our shores. Why is that so? Because I was given my stay at home order from March when I guess the rest of the island was given theirs, what, late May, early June? So I had two months in which I had to strategize and how I'm going to cope because you know, this had psychological impact because you're the only one inside the home that has to stay in. Everybody else can go about their business freely in the initial stage, even though the week after I was discharged from the hospital that was when we recorded our very first case. But it wasn't that intense, so people could still move around. I had to stay in based on my condition. So I had to strategize then. What do I do so as not to 
swallow up or be wallowed into pity or you know feeling sorry for myself and um being anxious depressed and so while i was still in the hospital i started a new thrust in immersing myself into scripture and believe you me i am very shy it may not come across that way but you know what home girl become even prayer warrior in the hospital yes man i run off my little cubicle because i was reading daily and i started praying and the persons in the cubicle welcome the prayer and look forward to the prayer um prayer sessions you know and yes i was encouraged i took my bible and i took some of my programs but when i finished going through i recognized that the ones that were left were the christmas programs and believe you me i, I did embark on my christmas programs during that time but as i said i immersed in scripture it's not so much quantity but it was quality and still is because i'm still doing it so i tend to draw for additional references and just to understand some of these scriptures we would have done already in bible study some we have not yet done in depth but i take the time to as i said immerse myself and try to get um additional resources to help me to have a fuller understanding of scripture and in doing this i recognize that there that for me i had additional benefits and the some of the benefits or at least this one that i'll speak of is that it brought me closer to it, it gave me a closer relationship with my lord and savior i have also improved on my prayer life because in delving into scripture you find yourself praying i'm not talking ritualistic prayer i'm talking that when you're doing it when you're deep when you're inside it when you're when you're dissecting when you're trying to understand fuller you recognize that you have to pray you have to ask for a purging you have to ask for direction you have you have to ask you have to invite god into that um investigation into scripture so that you yourself you know is have a better understanding is is um more comforted and can also share more openly because you know you would have increased your your knowledge base and i am saying this to all the saints that this is a strategy that if you have not yet tried it you can try because in investigating in reading in immersing yourself into the scripture you will strengthen your relationship with the lord and for those who are yet to accept him i can tell you that your position your prestige all that you've acquired all that you've accomplished will not allow you to feel the peace that you feel when you have that intimate relationship with god and i i tell you i use the motive it's something that i regurgitate a lot i've heard it in church and i myself have regurgitated it several times you know the peace that surpasseth all understanding but until you have experienced that peace you're only saying it i can tell you i am nowhere near perfect but i have prayed i have asked for a purging a cleansing i have shred so many habits so many behaviors that are unbecoming and i am now experiencing a more wholesome relationship with the lord and i can tell you this peace i cannot i am sure persons in the audience I've experienced this peace or is still experiencing it so maybe you can help me to explain the depth of the peace to which I speak I can tell you that my situation has not changed 
What has changed is that it is no longer mountainous. That mountain has become a molehill. When my doctor looks at me and she says, Diane, I do not like your results. But the problem is not as big anymore. It doesn't become focal and frontal in my everyday thought process. It is still there. It has not changed. But I have gotten that peace, that assurance that you know god is still there and he's taking me through i am embracing the lord with everything that i have and i am using my scripture i am i continue to immerse myself in scripture and so it takes up most of my time so it, it leaves me with very little time to wallow in in self-pity and it has strengthened my relationship so this is my few words and i hope that you will consider what i have said and for those who have not yet accepted the lord please make that step from sin to grace as i said before nothing you own nothing you have and nothing you give entitles you to the peace that surpasses all understanding have a blessed day we will now stand for a hymn of meditation to love the Lord our God and then our deacon Basil Parker will come to us praying for the world please stand a call going out across the land in every nation a call to those who swear allegiance to the cross of Christ a call to true humility to live our lives responsibly to deepen our devotion Then be sober, moving only in the spirit, as aliens and strangers in a hostile foreign land. The message we're proclaiming is repentance and forgiveness, the offer of salvation.
let us pray. Compassionate and loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer and for your holy and powerful word. For your word, which calls us to devotion and truth. We acknowledge, Lord, that because of your power and your faithfulness, nothing in our lives is outside of your control. And we thank you for the assurance that you have planned a future and a hope for our lives. Lord, as we look at our country today, and at the world around us. At events over the past months and what we face in the months ahead, there is much to be anxious about and to fear. But despite the anxiety and uncertainty, your word tells us there is only one thing to fear and that is to fear God himself. We thank you, Lord, that the fear of God is not a fear that leads to cringing and hiding as Adam and Eve did. Rather, the fear of God is a humble recognition of your holiness, your authority, and your sovereignty. Lord, develop in us a deep reverence for you, a reverence that leads to life, wisdom, and greater intimacy with you. Lord, we pray for those who are experiencing difficulties at this time, economic problems, job problems, emotional problems. For those in our churches and communities who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Those who are lonely, depressed, who have no one to remember them. Healer of our broken world, respond to their individual needs. Send someone, Lord, to visit, to talk to, to show compassion and to comfort and may your love flood their lives with healing and hope lord we remember our children whose education continues to be disrupted whose future remains uncertain we think of those who should be leaving school but amidst the confusion cannot be sure what is on the horizon for them. Grant them comfort and hope, and may your blessing, Lord, be on each one of them. Lord, we pray for our communities across this island, especially our unplanned communities, lacking in common amenities. We pray that our people in those communities those who are powerless and have no voice will be able to access basic hygiene and to follow the guidance of our health professionals. We pray, Lord, for our churches and the communities they serve. Lord, grant us sensitivity and courage as we seek to witness in these communities. Make us alert to the needs of our communities and ministry opportunities. And may our generosity and love reflect your mercy and your grace and your own generosity and love to us. Lord, we pray for a world where countries find it difficult to be fair and just to each other our brothers and sisters in the United States 
where racial injustice and inequality prevails. In Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, where COVID is compounded by poverty and war. Lord, remind us of your injunction to love our neighbors and to be our brother's keeper. Lord, even though we are surrounded by the virus and it threatens our own survival, we pray, Lord, that you will grant us hope. The kind of hope which was maintained by David while being pursued and hiding from enemies loyal to Absalom, his son. Like David, we pray, even when it appeared that all was lost, Lord, you are our shield and eternal protector. When we are in danger or distress, help us to trust in your character. Thank you, Lord, for answering us from heaven and acting on our behalf when we cry out to you. These and other mercies we ask in Christ's name. Amen. scripture reading this morning comes to us from Acts 1 verses 1 to 11. That is Acts 1 verses 1 to 11 and this will be read by our sister Melody Cork. After which we'll have a selection from our brother Corey Daly and then the next voice you'll hear is our Reverend Sean O'Connell. Good morning, everyone. Scripture reading comes to us from Acts 1, verses 1 through to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. After, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them from their sight. They were looking intently into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Verse 11, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Good 
Good morning, church. In light of Mission Awareness Month, I will be doing Carry Your Candle. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings the fire ignites a candle and makes his home carry a candle run through the darkness seek of the hopeless confused and torn hold out your candle for all to see it Take your candle, go light your world. Take your candle, go light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he tries to light his own candle. been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. Carry a candle, run through the darkness, seek out the hopeless, the tired and torn. Hold out your candle. hearts are blazing so let's raise our candles and light up the sky pray to our father in the name of jesus make us a beacon in darkest time carry a candle Run through the darkness, seek out the lonely, disease and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle, go light your world. Take your Park Baptist. Uh, I had to remove my cowl. Well, it's yeah, my cowl. That black thing around my face. Um, I'm sure by now you are tired of the ones you wear. I've become tired of the one I wear, and it causes me a lot of grief in just attempting to breathe uh, there are days including yesterday where i became uh, ill just by breathing my own exhaust um, generally exhaust is that way what is mine comes up just let it pass over your head there um, but if you breathe enough of your carbon dioxide it does create problems for your respiratory, um, the aspect of your body that breathes for you, your lungs, 
um, very, very important. So take the time as often as you can to breathe uh, the open air, get into a corner somewhere, somewhere away from persons and just remove it and breathe. It, it's more injurious to keep breathing your own carbon dioxide. Um, we still have a ways to go until we are free from Madam COVID-19. She has invaded our lives. So, <laughs> wow. You know, I purposely say these things. You hear the response of the church. It, I, okay, fine. You, you, you went there, so let me go there. Uh, I've made a distinction. COVID-19 is a female ver. Well, Corona is a female version. COVID-19 is a male version. So, just, just take your pick. Pastor Henlin, God bless you richly. Uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be here to share God's word with you. And indeed, because this is a missionary emphasis. Uh, I've said here from this platform that the work of the church does not end. Uh, it, it changes somewhat, not in terms of what she has said over the centuries since her inception, but the mode in which we go about presenting that message changes with every generation and no doubt 2020 which i'm sure by now for some of us we are already living in 2021 or for some of us we are searching for the reset button if i could turn back the hands of time yeah reality is this is where we are and in this season this session of our lives we are called to continue the work of the lord in whatever godly fashion we are able to present that word in and thank god again we have the opportunity of the the world wide web uh, we have social media in its different forms uh, we still have pen and paper we have different media we can use in order to convey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in a clear enough fashion that men and women, boys and girls, can come to know this God that we uh, serve. So it, it doesn't, it, it hasn't ended. And for some of us, the fear is that we, we have become uh, sedentary in our approach. You know, we, we, we sit and we've become uh, somewhat lazy in our approach to the propagation of the gospel. I start by giving a quotation from A.W. Tozer, his uh, famous book, The Pursuit of God. Uh, and I give a quote there. The man is saved, but he is not hungry nor thirsty after God. In fact, he is specifically taught to be satisfied and is encouraged to be content with little. I want deliberately to encourage this mighty longing after God. The lack of it has brought us to our present low estate. The stiff and wooden quality about our religious lives is a result of our lack of holy desire. Not double H-O-L-L-Y, but H-O-L-Y. Complacency is a deadly foe of our spiritual growth. Acute desire must be present or there will be no manifestation of Christ to his people. He waits to be wanted. Too bad that with many of us he waits so long, so very long, in vain. It's a mouthful. And hopefully it doesn't speak about anyone in this building or anyone watching. Somehow I suspect it does a few of us at different aspects or parts of our godly experience or our walk with the Lord. Especially in this time of COVID where we are forced to come to worship physically. Uh, we're not forced to engage the way that we are accustomed because of fear uh, and for good reason in many respects we have now taken on a new normal and that new normal if not 
carefully managed will cause our fervor, our energy, the drive to leak out or seep out of our uh, Christian experience. We're no longer counted as a group anymore coming into a sanctuary like this because of the setting we're in. It's a lot easier now to hide behind a screen. It's a lot easier now to do things in different ways or new ways. Toza here is very careful in how he puts forward his point about the individual who, yes, has had a personal relationship with the Lord, that initial experience, an ongoing experience, but doesn't strive or strain toward engaging God in a grander way because there is so much more to God than we have already experienced. And he wants to reveal himself in a grander way, in a greater way to us, in the, the, the different uh, issues and challenges and circumstances that we find ourselves in daily. But we have limited ourselves to just the basic uh, or the surface area or level of our Christian experience. We need to be very careful about that, even as we go through this missionary September, as we once again reflect upon the, the, the mission of the church, the, the outreach of the church, who we are called to, to serve and how we are called to, to push the gospel forward. Because if we're not careful, COVID will continue to be the major focus of you know where we are and what we're doing and how we're going about it we can't ignore it but for some of us it has enveloped us it has overwhelmed us it has overpowered us to the point where we do little or nothing the work goes on in the case of the text before us i'll be seeking to use two uh acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 and the passage which was read so well only a few moments ago. I'm going to do a bit of gymnastics here and start in Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 passage because it showcases for us what the church should look like and how she should function. Uh, in the passage, it states here that the disciples the people of god the the christian community devoted themselves to the apostles teaching this is verse 42 of chapter 2 and the, to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers and all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had all things in common and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as many had need day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising god and having favor with all the people and the lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved this is what the fledgling church looked like full of joy full of energy their focus was that of a flint upon the lord who brought them together who born them into being they they met together they broke bread together they prayed together they sung together they shared one with the other not just food but also possessions so that persons who became a part of this 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 new move of god in the midst of his people the jews would would would, would become an attractive uh, assortment of individuals who came from various backgrounds uh singles and 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 married and and persons who were of different uh hue skin color etc from from different walks of life this was the new composite of of of, of what god was doing in that day in that season and they were growing they were blossoming fruit was being born this is the look of the church in a time where potential persecution existed 
where the Lord of this new establishment was crucified where the disciples were coming out of a setting of uncertainty and interestingly it is important for us to appreciate brethren the role of the church as we see to establish this missionary affair as i said before it doesn't change because every generation requires the the preaching of the gospel it requires the pushing of the gospel the, the gospel needs to be shared in every generation the way in which is way in which it is done may have to change has changed will continue to change but the gravity of the message of the gospel jesus christ coming and dying upon a cruel cross dying for the sin of of, of humanity and that it is only in him that salvation is found that that in a nutshell and there are the components that we add to that as we express it the church the role of the church is to live not to lounge we're not just existing even in a covid experience we are thriving we are living and the missionary the missionary uh conviction or the missionary engagement is proof of that that we have not changed our posture we continue to preach jesus and him crucified the the role of the church is not just to live but it also is to convey through the way we live through the things we say we convey confidently who jesus is and what jesus has done for us what he is doing for us what we are looking forward to we express the things of god as mentioned in the scriptures we are here to convey confidently not to convict anyone the issue of conviction is done only by the spirit of god you read in acts in john chapter 16 verses 4 to 14 as jesus there speaking to the disciples uh expresses to them in the earlier part of that of, of of that paragraph that the holy spirit will be sent to convict the world of righteousness and of its sin we're not here to convict anyone we are here simply through what we say and how we live convey the word of the lord and and doesn't that lift uh, a burden from our shoulders you know some of us go out of our way and we become very downhearted and and broken and and really uh grief stricken when we preach a message or we hand out gospel tracts and we see persons not receiving it and we we take it personally not realizing that it is not about us but it's not the rejection of us but it's the rejection of our lord and what he has to say and that the issue of salvation is more about the spirit of god convicting the individual of which you are speaking to or sharing with by way of word and life than what you you know beyond which you say you need to put it that way so you have a role to play the things you say and the way you live very very important to the conveying of of of, of the the missionary engagement but if the spirit does not convict if the spirit does not draw that individual then salvation does not come your job is just simply to speak and to live the role of the church is to be unafraid not unsure and during this period of covid the church dependent on what you're watching and where you live has demonstrated in some sectors this unafraid approach sometimes to, sometimes to folly where they they don't wear masks they don't social distance they don't even go out of their way to 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 to, to engage responsibly you know the lord has saved us and he's going to take care of us and we don't have to worry and so they gather wherever and they engage however and it's just a very poor example to those who are on the outside looking in that listen yeah we, we might have that conviction but we still have a responsibility toward neighbor i've said that before and i've said it in different places and i'll continue to say it even now the the, the missionary engagement is on the siege the missionary engagement is now being strained because of how we live and how we engage our neighbor 
Our neighbor might not be in here with us, but our neighbor is at home watching us over the wall. Listening to what we say and, 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 and watching how we live. They listen to the news and they hear the, they, they hear the edict from the, the governing authorities and they watch how we respond to that. And when all of this is over and it will pass as every generation has had something, when we now go out there boldly to proclaim Christ, what you're going to find is that there are individuals who will refuse this Christ not because of who he is and necessarily what the Bible has put forward, but because of who we've made him out to be in terms of how we live. A lot of the churches overseas don't seem to appreciate that. They don't seem to appreciate that we are making it difficult for the missionary engagement to bear the fruit that it needs to. We are making it more difficult. It is becoming more stressful and strenuous simply because of what we say and how we live and how we engage ruling authority. The role of the church is to be sure meaning is to demonstrate genuineness not a sham or a scam we don't need to unpack that too much we we we, we we've struggled with this level of genuineness a number of persons aren't here with us they use the our 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 our, our scamming unfortunately it's just like the, the, the poorest word i could use but, but but the lack of 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 genuineness against us they don't want to engage this god because if 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 we are struggling as we are to demonstrate that level of genuineness it hurts the missionary engagement they struggle to come in because of how we live and what we say The role of the church is to be conventional, meaning to be orderly and not confusing. This church over here is saying that and, and that church is saying that and that denomination is doing this and, and this denomination is doing that. And, but, but there is a certain kind of consensus that we ought to have at the most basic of levels. Especially in this time especially when we are we are trying we, we are seeking to 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 live where we're seeking to keep the doors open we're seeking to thrive we're seeking to establish christ instead for many we have demonstrated confusion instead of remaining calm and poised we, we we're running around like headless chickens instead of preaching christ confidently surely we are baffling and flipping and flopping what the gospel according to the dr luke in acts because what he's doing here is making a presentation to an individual named theophilus theophilus is a a, a benefactor theophilus is a government official he's a patron he's a, a high-ranking government official that he is conveying uh, episodes of, 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 of the development of the church, episodes of, of, of how the church came into being with the view of providing an opportunity or creating an atmosphere where the missionary engagement will take root. He is the most detailed of the, the, of, of the writers of the Gospels. The missionary engagement is when connected to ministry enrichment equals ministry establishment let me say that again the missionary engagement plus ministry enrichment equals ministry establishment when jesus taught his disciples to pray a part of the the lord's prayer he said he says thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is 
in heaven the establishment of the the rules that govern heaven should also be established in the earth and who are the individuals who seek to establish those principles and 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 those rules and regulations that govern heaven well you and i we have that responsibility in our own lives in our own families where we work where we play where we go we carry those kingdom principles with us the issue of missionary engagement is about establishing god's kingdom in the earth that's what we're seeking to do and when we focus our attention on ministry engagement missionary engagement and ministry enrichment then what we will have is ministry establishment firm solid concrete churches not buildings but churches and those churches don't have to be 1005 5000 persons strong but in the case of the church establishing acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 we're talking about small churches house churches individuals who love to meet who love to greet who love to relate to each other who love to talk about christ and live for christ and establish this missionary engagement wherever they go that's how you push forward the missionary engagement the mission of the church is more than mere missionary engagement but it is ministry establishment because here is the reality what we have here in acts chapter 1 all the way to acts chapter 4 is the establishment of the church in a in a particular order the disciples are being spoken to by jesus and he's about to be taken up into heaven and he's leaving them with final instructions in terms of how they were going to go about this ministry or missionary engagement how were they going to go about ministry enrichment how were they going to go about ministry establishment in order to get to the establishment they have to start with the engagement and for them to have that level of missionary engagement they need to follow these very simple rules that are established in acts chapter one you don't get to a joyous church you don't get to a church that is growing and bursting at the seams you don't get to a church that has all things in common and and by that i mean not that everyone had a socialist mentality but because there were persons in there for example a barnabas who had the means who took the time to sell what he had so that those in the midst who didn't have much or didn't have any would have had enough to keep them going he was blessed of god to be someone of means it's not a socialist mentality there were those persons in the church who had a lot of means and there were those in the church who didn't have much but those who had much were able to assist and support those who had little or none so that those who had needs all who had needs had their needs taken care of you don't get to ministry establishment before you start missionary engagement so luke dr luke is communicating to the honorable theophilus and saying to him in the text that i am now adding a part two to what i've written in the gospel of luke this is now an expansion of what i've written this is a volume two this is now helping you to appreciate how this move of christ how this missionary work of christ was going to now expand into the then known world and beyond to which you and i are now benefiting from and while staying with them he ordered them not to depart from jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you heard from me for john baptized with water but you will be baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now it's important for you to appreciate that you cannot establish missionary engagement in this time or any time without the holy spirit residing in your midst now we already talked about we, we already know that the holy spirit resides in the believer but what we're talking about is a missionary thrust 
a missionary engagement individually and collectively so that men and women boys and girls will appreciate that this this coming into or this connecting to a church is a work more so of the spirit than it is about what you do or what you say without him pushing you along driving you along leading you in the process preparing the hearts of men and women boys and girls for what you will say and how you will live then there is no salvation that comes to the fore the holy spirit is critical to the process in john chapter 16 i mentioned it earlier i continue uh, uh reading the passage in terms of the work of the spirit in the midst of the believer as he or she or we seek to establish this missionary engagement toward ministry establishment jesus said in verse 4 but i have said these things to you that when their hour comes you may remember that i told them to you i did not say these things to you from the beginning because i was with you but now i'm getting i'm going to him who sent me that's his father god above and none of you ask me where you are going but because i have said these things to you sorrow has filled your hearts nevertheless i tell you the truth it is to your advantage that i go away for if i do not go away the helper will not come to you another name for the spirit is the helper but if i go i will send him to you and when he comes he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment we looked at that earlier a few minutes ago concerning sin because they do not believe in me concerning righteousness because i go to the father and you will see me no longer concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judge i still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now when you when the spirit of truth comes for he will not speak when he comes he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come he will glorify me for he will take what is mine and declare it to you and all that the father has is mine therefore i said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you that that that's that is a summary of the move of the spirit in the life of the believer this missionary engagement that we are talking about this thrust that is spoken of in matthew chapter 28 where jesus says to the disciples go into all the world and preach the gospel um teaching them what i have taught you baptize and and, and doing the things that followed in first corinthians chapter 9 speaking about the disciples going out and that asking the lord to the, the the issue of salvation that is being played out there but also in the gospels of jesus speaking to the disciples and asking them to pray that the lord of the harvest will thrust out or push out those who will preach and teach about the kingdom and about the salvation that comes along with it missionary engagement requires the holy spirit to lead the charge in your life in the life of the church so that all those who need to be in here will come it cannot happen any other way it is a spirit that convicts men of sin it is the spirit that helps them to appreciate the importance of righteousness it is the spirit that speaks about judgment which is coming not only do we see the work of the spirit in the life of the church or in the life of these men that are spoken of here in acts chapter 1 but as we move forward when they had come together they asked him these are the disciples lord will you at this time restore the kingdom of israel and he said to them it is not for you to know times or seasons that the father has fixed by his own authority but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth don't take your focus off why you are being brought together as much as covid is the talking point for 2021 and will be the talking point for 2022 and will be the talking point for 2023 the elections talking point u.s elections talking point uh black lives matter 
talking point. Hurricanes and, and, and all of the other things that come along with the natural disasters. These are all talking points of life. Never lose focus on why you have been brought into this kingdom and why you have been brought together as a church. Do not lose focus on what matters most. And what matters most in this missionary engagement is that you are called to be witnesses and you can't be witnesses without the spirit being a witness to you so that you can be a witness to others they are focused on, on, on Israel being free. There, there's nothing wrong with that. You know. they, they're, they're focused on, 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 on the Roman authorities being driven out. There's nothing wrong with that. that. Those are secondary issues. As a matter of fact, God has set a timetable for all things to come to a conclusion. But there are some things that are more important than that. Some things that you have control over, you have responsibility for, that you have to attend to you can't control those things you can't control covid you can't bring covid to an end you can be responsible you must be responsible not only for yourself and your family but for your neighbor also but while these things are being worked out according to god's timetable your responsibility is to further the missionary engagement your responsibility is to keep focus on the Christ that has called you to be a missionary at this point in time. Not just the, 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 the missionary who has been, uh, is, is being paid by a church or, or has been sanctioned by a church to go to some distant land in order to preach the gospel. But wherever you go, highway, byway, school, business, where you play, you bring the gospel of Jesus Christ with you in your words and in, you, in your deeds. How you react how you respond that is how persons know who you are i found it interesting in the play that the person who was speaking to the individual on the phone did not know that the individual was a christian you don't really need someone to come out and say yes or no but if you take the time to observe them long enough if you take the time to listen to how they respond and listen to you know how they respond to questions or circumstances around them then you can you can gauge you can you can pick up the the, the angle you can approach in order to, to 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 proceed with the preaching and the teaching of the gospel it's interesting that that person didn't know that the depth of relationship that was already established to a point and not even knowing if the person was a believer the missionary engagement is not fulfilled and the ministry establishment is not fulfilled if we do not focus on the things which matter most it was jesus who said before he left you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and to the end of the earth. That's your job. That's not going to change. Disease, pestilence, viruses, persecution, it does not end. If you do your church history, you realize that the church, uh, the church over the centuries, when persecution came upon them, and here shortly after chapter 1, as the persecution broke out against the church, wherever individuals who named the name of Christ went, the gospel went along with them. The principles of the kingdom went along with them. They ne even when they went into hiding, they took the time to continue to preach the gospel in secret. They continue to plant the gospel. They continue to plant the seed of righteousness wherever they went because it does not change the job that they have, the circumstances that they find themselves in. I give you one more point coming out of the text and verse 9 when he had said these things as they were looking on he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight and while they were gazing into heaven as he went behold two men stood by them in white robes and said men of Galilee why do you stand looking into heaven this Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven 
will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Jesus gave them instructions. They were sidetracked by their own idea and ideal about what should be happening at this time. The, 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 the kingdom, your kingdom is coming and, and incoming. The, 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 the removal of Rome, Jesus said to them, focus on the spirit. Focus on missionary engagement. And thereafter, God had to send angels in to get them to move from where they were. Missionary engagement is not easy work. And if you do your research, you'll find that very few persons who are a part of churches, doesn't matter where, very few persons do the work of missionary engagement often. If you were to be honest with yourself, you ask, when was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? We don't need to put hands up. We don't need to, to demonstrate that level of honesty here. You know, but, but you search yourself and you ask a question. When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? With all that has been happening around us, what, the, what, 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 what has happened is what happened to the disciples here. The, Jesus has been taken out and instead of going into Jerusalem, instead of going into wait upon the Spirit to come, instead of following the instructions of the Lord, they became frozen men looking at their Lord, leaving them. The circumstances around them cause them to become frozen. They're no longer active. They're no longer engaged. In a sense, they become crippled. When Jesus needed them to go, needed them to wait on the Spirit, needed them to be focused on the missionary engagement ahead so that the ministry could be established. The angels were sent and said to them, listen, go into, follow the instructions as Jesus has provided you. It is so easy today to become sidetracked. It is so easy today to become misled. It is so easy as a church to become sedentary, meaning our bottoms are plastered onto the benches. And our fervor for preaching and teaching the gospel ebbs away. There is no better time than this time to reestablish our love for the missionary engagement. This year, I remember, and, and it's, it's, it's only a few months, we're now in month nine, when Kobe Bryant passed, it shook the world. When the Black Panther passed recently, it shook the world. And every person that you and I have heard having passed, Toots, and recently the fashion designer, this morning aside, with every person that we've seen pass, Fancy Skin. With every person that we've seen passing this year, it takes a toll on us. It becomes a heavier weight on us. And if it does not motivate us to become more missionary oriented, missionary minded, if it doesn't cause us to become more driven to engage on a missionary level simply because if COVID doesn't take somebody out, something else will. That lives are hanging in the balance. We're not called to save anyone. We're just called to be conveyors of truth. We're just called to be led by the Spirit to deposit seeds of truth in our communities wherever we live. We're called to be emissaries as powers and emissaries. We're called to present truth in an apologetic way, in an ordered way, 
in a systematic way as we have a Luke doing here in the book of Acts for Theophilus. We are called to, to, to allow the Spirit to engage us in, in a real way, to, to not to keep us from becoming uh, disoriented or distracted, but to be focused on the issue of missionary engagement. Because if we don't have missionary engagement, if we don't continue to have missionary engagement, we are going to not be able to establish ministry. There is no Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, without Acts chapter 1. And in the midst of all of this, if there's one word you should take from this message, it's simply obedience. Jesus said in the passage, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Wherever you go. That is your role. That is your job. That has not changed. That will not change. And until you draw your last breath on this side of life. You are called to consistently be that kind of witness. I pray that you will become that missionary engaged individual. And that you will continue, Gregory Park, to be a ministry enriching environment. So that the fruit of your labor will be ministry establishing. Let us not allow the times we are in to stop us from being Christians. It may be challenging. It may take a toll on us. We may have to pause more often than we would like to catch our breath, to reorient ourselves, to go back to basics. But let it not stop us from fulfilling that which Jesus Christ died, which is to establish the principles of his kingdom of which salvation is a major part and when those who come in contact with us see us they'll understand that this person is missionary oriented this person is seeking to establish the kingdom of god right where they are are or wherever they they go and that you're willing to step beyond that and extend that hand of enrichment so that you can continue to establish the ministry wherever you go. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to be focused on that which you have called us primarily to do. You saved us so that we can promote Christ before others so that others can come to know this God that we serve Lord we admit that we like the disciples have been frozen at times we became distracted we lost our bearing Father, we pray that you'd help us to be the people, your people, that are focused on the ministry, focused on the mission, the establishment of your kingdom right here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. We will now stand for a hymn of response. Here I am, Lord. Please stand.
Pop Baptist, I charge you. I charge you to continue the work of your Lord in the season that you are in. Fail not to be his mouthpiece. Fail not to be his hands and feet. Fail not to share the word of the Lord and of his kingdom. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. And his spirit resides in you. And will manifest again through your words that you will share and the lives you will live that men and women boys and girls may know that God still rules and reigns in the midst of his people I pray for you that you will continue to be a light to this community that you will continue to be hungry and thirsty for the things of your God that your fervor for the establishment of the kingdom the work of the missionary the spirit of the missionary may shine through now and forevermore i pray that you will be blessed and strengthened for the task ahead and that whatever the enemy may bring before thee that your god will enable you to move ahead in his strength that you will not be sidetracked or dis or this disrupted but that you will continue to move forward in the strength of your God Lord I commit your people to you I commit the leaders of this church to you and now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest remain and abide with us all both now and forevermore the church says Amen God bless you